Hey everybody, welcome back to Java Chat. As you can see right over there, I got another guest, and this guy is a, how do I describe this? He is a specialist in what I'm trying to do as a specialist. And he's already been there and done that a couple times. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him. Uh, some of you have been hearing me talk about podcasting uh, and where, what a great platform it is to get your message out to your audience. And that audience, you know, whatever that audience may be, there, and there's a ton of them and there's a ton of overlap and there's a ton of people that want to hear what you got to talk about. Uh, a lot of times I think people miss the fact that they actually have a message to spread. And this gentleman right here, his name's Ben Kruger. Ben, thanks for joining me on Java Chat. Hey, Michael, pumped to be here, man. Hey, he's got I've water, got, I've, got I've got coffee. Got water. It's all good. Yeah. I just had, had half orange before the coffee, so I'm, I'm trying to stay somewhat healthy. Anyway, I found, I found Ben uh, through a, a local platform that, that helps me find experts. And Ben's the only one on podcasting that I've seen on there uh, that has the credentials and, and the cred. Um, and I wanted to bring him on here so he could share with you guys a little bit of why podcasting can be a great thing for you. Um, why in particularly right now would be a good time, you know, like when's a good time like now to start. Um, he's He's got a story to share. So... I want to introduce him, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ben Kruger. Ben, would you please introduce yourself and share a little bit about who you are and what you've been doing? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so first off, really, really appreciate you having me on, and it's kind of funny that that platform is a platform of people who are, you know, podcast consider themselves I know. Yeah, topic, <laughs> you know, uh, knowledgeable about topics as podcast guests. So it's just kind of funny that I'm one of the few around podcasting, but. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Ben Kruger. Um, I am the founder of Cashflow Podcasting. We're a um, podcast launch production, uh, launch and production service, mostly for industry influencers, uh, people we like to call um, industry advocates, those folks who are leaders, educators, um, and they they are there to lift up the industry, lift up their audiences, um, and create a bigger slice of the pie for themselves by creating a bigger pie for everybody, not just, you know, you know, the classic what's in it for me. So, um, that's our, that's our deal or what I'm, what I do primarily. Um, but got I into all of this. Yeah. That's the, where, yeah. Where, did this, where did this all start? I mean, come on. We, we weren't, we weren't all waking Let's up in the morning going, it. this is going to be my live stream. Oh, heck no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was a, I was a big podcast listener, um, back in the day. This is, you know, maybe 2011, 2010. Um, and I actually heard about a internship opportunity through a podcast. Nice. Um, really, you know, really resonated for it with me. And so I applied for it and got it. And, um, this is with, a, a an organization called the dynamite circle, which is like, um, I've heard that name before. Who's in that? Yeah. It's like an online group of, um, laptop lifestyle entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, so okay. you can kind of like start a business, yeah. this location independent, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. Um, so I worked with them for a little while, which was really interesting. And, and, um, Talking to the owner, uh, Dan Andrews, who runs their podcast, Tropical mm -hmm. MBA, he was talking about how much work the podcast was. Um, and so I, you know, over the course of a few conversations, offered to handle the production of the show for them. Um, and a set, long story short, they became my first client, um, really liked my work, and so started kind of referring some other folks in the group to me. Um, but it really got interesting for me when I started, uh, had a, had a conversation with a gentleman who was a business owner, wanted to start a podcast to engage with his audience on a deeper level and, and, um, have a better connection with, you know, those folks through a podcasting, but, uh, it's that classic, you know, I want to do it right, but I don't have the time. Can you help me? make so, that happen so, um, so let me so let me jump so that's back when it got interesting steps. yeah I, i'm quite sure it did let me jump back a couple seconds here because I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't understand what it means to be the production person ah um, yeah back in back in the day 
production of a podcast required a lot of work. It still requires work, probably not as much as it used to when you got involved, when you give somebody an idea of what you had to do to produce one podcast. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton more software and platforms and systemized uh, options now. Back in the yeah. day, it was... Yeah. It was desktop Adobe Audition, which is an and audio editing it. software. That's yeah. what it was. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yep. So it was a lot more like a lot more technical jargon, and the process was the same. It just took a little bit longer to learn the ins and outs. But really, it's the turning the audio from a conversation into a ready to release podcast episode yeah. that sounds professional it has yeah. music it has intros outros it has transitions all the you know ums ahs awkward pauses all that kind of stuff is taken out or not um depending on the show and uh it's generally very akin, it's very akin to running an actual radio show live it's isn't very it? similar it's yeah. very similar because there can't yeah. be any you can't have dead space you can't have <laughs> that awkward silence that that does inevitably does occur whether yep. you're on a live I, I have it on live streams all the time i'll be sitting i'll be just like oh sorry guys i forgot i'm, I'm still alive <laughs> or yeah my my gears were churning and nothing came out for a while <laughs> or, or the best one um um uh uh yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it takes you about 20 seconds to come up with a decent one word response to a question. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been there. So, <laughs> brother, we've all been yeah, there. That's it's not unusual. We've all done it. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, production, you know, and even now it, it takes some time and effort, but it's much more simplified and can be much more simplified because there's a lot of software and a lot of, you know, easy to <clears> use <throat> systems out there, which is awesome. It makes it, it, makes it much more accessible for people to do professional shows. And you started listening, you said back in 2010, but podcasting has been around longer than that, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's actually think been, it, yeah, it's actually been around since like the early 2000s. That's um, what I thought. But in like a super, boy, you want to get technical. Like people used to have to send audio files in, in multiple um, zip files via email. And then if you wanted to listen to it, you had to open all the emails, download all the zip files, yep. combine them all into one audio track, and then listen to that. That was like early days of podcasting, but that yeah. was obviously buddies, too... Uh, one of my buddies used to actually go into CBS's recording studio, and he would have to rent their... He would have to rent the studio to do his podcast, and then he would have... And this is, this is pre-recorded days of, of pre-recorded shows um, when it was still on tape. So mm -hmm. it, it, before the term podcasting came out, oh, it was like that too. And that was all the, you know, the cut and paste stuff. And it was, you want to talk yeah. about frustrating on some days. So yeah, it's, it's for those that have, don't really understand, it's kind of like talk radio, but now it's online Yeah, and it's gotten, it's gotten better. You're right. It does still take work. I mean, I'm going to have to do some post-production work on this. Uh, it, it's, it's inevitable. It's needed to, you know, better out the quality of something, you know, try to get rid of pops and, and peaks and all that kind of stuff. I don't have my pop screen on today. So obviously I'm going to be doing some, some popping. Um, but I'll make sure I add a little extra work for you with yeah, you know, some sure. lip Feel smacks. Free. And, yeah. Nice. Good job. Know, some of those Good fun job. Things. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to start this podcast over everybody. Uh, no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, but I mean, after I have a quick off-air conversation with my guest, today. <laughs> it's almost that's almost like the what is that? The judge? Would you please talk to your client? Yes, Your Honor. One moment, please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like get them in line. <laughs> All right. So, so okay. So fast forward. You, you've mentioned there's there's new things that have made it easier. There is still an amount of work into it. Um, why the hell would anybody want to do it? Yeah. So, um, in I'm very, um, this is a very biased answer as you, as you might, uh, guess, but I'm also biased towards businesses and brands that want to use podcasting as mm -hmm. part of what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's the hobby fun, interesting aspects of it. Um, and I think those are great. Uh, but I know, you know, the value that I can add and, and share for folks is more in the business realm. So that's where my, you know, uh, learning and, and advice tends to center around. So um, what it comes down to with, with podcasting, um, there's a bunch of different things you can do with it, but fundamentally, 
I find that podcasting is a incredible medium for building intimacy, for building intimacy with your audience, for building intimacy and deep connection with nice. others in your industry. So whether they're influencers and folks that you're interviewing or whether they're, you know, whatever, it allows you to build depth of relationships mm-hmm. um, that other platforms are challenging to achieve that through. So, you know, you can do a lot of different things with it, but when it all kind of boils down to it, I find that to be the central thing. And then from that intimate connection, you know, when we want to use a product or a service, oftentimes we ask, you know, someone we know, like, and trust what they recommend. Right. If we, you know, that's how we interact and relate in this world is through Mm -hmm. relationships. So Mm -hmm. the more you can build deep, credible, trusting relationships with your audience, with other industry influencers, with, you know, all of those types of individuals, the more it's going to translate into business results like leads, clients, referral partners, uh, speaking opportunities, you know, uh, publicity, all those kind of things that um, on the surface, you can, you can start with that as the intent. Um, but the deep connection and relationship is what's going to lead to all those things. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So hold on to that thinking. I got a, cu- I got a question for you when we come back from a quick break. We're going to be back in just a couple seconds, guys. I'm just going to take a couple quick messages. All right. Okay, we're back. So we were we were just discussing why podcasting um, and what it can do. Typically, who would you see as a prime candidate for podcasting? Yeah. Oh, I love this question. So uh, <laughs> you know, and, I thought and, you might. <laughs> yeah, and very few people think about like who is actually positioned to. Um, for podcasting as a medium for the natural strengths of podcasting to support best. Right. Um, a lot of people kind of go the, like everybody should be podcasting angle, which I think is nonsense. I don't think everybody should be podcasting. Um, what, what it comes down to um, for me is for businesses and, and brands anyways, there's a few key things that I think should be in place before you podcast or before you, you know, really seriously get into podcasting. So I'm going to take notes on this. So hang on. Yeah. So we have seen podcasting being used best as a lead nurture and engagement tool. So, you know, there's uh, lead generating activities there's nurturing and building that relationship activities and then mm-hmm. there's conversion activities so mm-hmm. you know converting that individual into a client or customer so you can help them on a bigger level right podcasting works most effectively um, as as we've found it over the last like eight years and working with hundreds of shows is as a nurture tool not necessarily as a lead generation tool a lot of people you know I want to start a podcast to grow my audience great However, podcasting is going to be much more, uh, much better at engaging the audience you already have and being the tool that allows people who discover you to engage with you on a deeper level and stick around so that at some point when they're ready to take the next step and get a bigger result for themselves, you're the option they end up working with. You're the person they know, like, and trust because they've been listening to you, you know, intimately in their ears for weeks, months you know, sometimes on the order of years. So um, the people who are best positioned to leverage podcasting are folks who have a clear offer that solves a problem for a very specific group of people. So um, a a perfect example of this is um, one of our clients, David Phelps. He has a podcast called um, the Dennis freedom blueprint mm-hmm. and it's his whole business is he helps dental practice owners build wealth through real estate investing nice. as, as specific as they get. That's um, pretty, yeah, that's pretty damn sharpened in right there. Yeah. It's like real honed in. Um, and because he's so specific, 
if anybody is stumbling along through iTunes and they come across his show that, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, it's not going to appeal to most people, but it's going to really hit home for the people that are in his crew. So heck yeah. Um, the, and then the pieces here, if you solve a specific problem, it really allows all of your content, all, you know, everything that you create, whether it's podcasting or otherwise mm -hmm. to center around you helping, helping people address that for themselves. Right. Um, and then your offers, whatever those are, are varying levels of that as well as you're helping them get results around, around that thing. So I, I, I see a lot of people using podcasting as a way to, oh, I'll start a podcast, I'll build an audience, and then I'll figure out how to serve them that way. That can work. Absolutely. It's certainly not the most effective or direct route. I was going to say, it, is that's going to be a little bit of a longer path to probably. It's a long path. It yeah. It's going to be much more of a grind. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, you know, um, like try things, iterate and test on a small scale. And once you have really figured out like how whatever you do works, how it delivers results and who it delivers the best results for, boom, now we're talking podcast time. Because until then, um, you might start a podcast for entrepreneurs or a, you know, whatever. And it's so broad that it doesn't speak to anyone. Um, and you don't actually solve a problem for anyone or you don't actually like tap into what's going on in your audience or your potential audience's brain, you mm -hmm. know, that conversation they're already having, which is where you want to be. So I see podcasting as a marketing channel, just like many others, but it's not the first step. It's not usually the second step somebody should take if they're getting into a business or if they're getting into a certain area. It should be something that is endeavored on once you have a, an established offer, you've worked through it with a couple of people, you've helped folks, you know, get some results and you know who you want to help with what you do essentially. And then boom, that's when you look at podcasting as, okay, awesome. I want a channel to deeply engage the folks that hear about me that, you know, um, hear a talk or they, you know, hear me being interviewed on a different podcast or whatever. Mm -hmm. I want that vehicle that allows me to build that strong relationship over time so that when they are ready to take the next step, I'm the person they get to do it with. Makes absolute sense to me. Yeah. Hmm. Crazy. Exciting stuff. Is that, uh, and sorry, was that alarm beeping on my side? I think it was because I didn't have an alarm on this end. Okay. But I could hear. Uh, and trust I don't me, know if, what's going on there. If, if an alarm goes off on my side, you will hear it. <laughs> well, that's the joy of podcast recording as well as all the uh, crazy background sounds and whatever's going on. You know, it's, I think that has a, you bring up an interesting point. A lot of people think, because in the old days, it was produced in a studio a lot of times. A yep. lot of soundproofing, a lot of stuff. Podcasting has shifted over the years to be very, very big. Look at, look at your background your home. Yep. My background is just a gray sheet because I'm trying to cover up that light that's coming through from that window. Yep. It's not as, <clears throat> as much as you need to be purposeful with what you're doing with regards to starting a podcast or, or running a podcast. It isn't as bad as it used to be. It isn't as rough yeah. as it used to be. And I yeah. think knowing the typical person that you just described, if they wanted to start something, what would, I mean, what's a, what's a, a viable beginner's budget to begin a podcast? Yeah. Good question. Good question. Um, yeah. And what, what you were talking about there too is like, uh, shows, shows now are like allowed to have personality. Like the personality can come from the accessibility of it. You right. know, the fact that you record it from your living room or, sure. you know, whatever, as opposed to, you know, it, having to be NPR level production and audio quality and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause you know, I, I'm not trying to fool anybody. I don't have an NPR studio over here. <laughs> uh, yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I bought this microphone for like 60 bucks, uh, like same. a couple of years ago. <clears throat> this has is been, the same. It's been my ride or die for a long time. So Ye years ago I had a, I had a, a sure SM 58. 
Yeah. That's how, that's how long ago. Beautiful. So, and then of course now they got like Yeti's got their deal. Sure's got their deal. Roland's got their deal. And I look at all of them. I go, y'all are too expensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't need to get, don't need to get fancy. So on that, on that same front, that applies for starting a podcast because really what it comes down to is you need some basic recording equipment. Right. Um, so like you're rocking the blue Yeti. I'm rocking uh, ATR 2100 Audio Technica, which sounds more technical than it is. Um, you know, both of these, you can buy them on Amazon for like, well, depending on what day it is, anywhere from 70 to 90 bucks. <laughs> right. Uh, you Do know, you have Prime for free shipping. Ex exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you need a podcast hosting account. Um, generally you're looking at 10 to 15 bucks a month, um, ballpark. Hey. And you know, if you want to simplify things, you can do interviews over zoom, which is free. If you don't get crazy exactly on what the we're doing front. here. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you don't need to do any production whatsoever other than just like, you know, some free software to put a intro and an outro on there. Yep. Maybe you pop on Fiverr to get some artwork and you're up and running for a couple hundred bucks tops. Easy. Yep. Um, so there's that end of the spectrum, which is I have time to invest and I want to do it cheaply. Yeah. Awesome. I'm a big fan. Um, there's the other side of the spectrum, which before, is before we oh, get sorry. into that other side. That, no, 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 you're fine. Before we get into that other side of the spectrum, I'm gonna take another quick break because I want I want time for that. There is a reason I brought you here, and it was to talk about that side of things. That's your specialty and that's your expertise. And I think people need to understand why it's important to do it right mm -hmm. when you do it the first time. It's great to start a podcast. I started mine's free. I did my whole thing, and I was literally using Anchor.fm. I'm still on that platform. I'm now syndicated out because of them. It, it's gotten better, but still, I, I use a lot of this for, again, for engagement. I don't use this to drive sales. I don't sell anything on this, but, but done correctly, this can be a good revenue producer for the people we we're just talking about that typically would be good for this. So we'll take another break. You guys hang out for a second, give you a couple more messages real quick and we'll be right back. All right. Thanks gang. Hang on. Cool. Here we go again. Okay. So you were just about to start getting into the real meat of why I brought you here, which is if you're going to do a podcast. <laughs> you're going to do back, it. Michael, hold me yeah. back. And, and you're going to do this the right way. <laughs> no, I ain't holding you back, bro. I'm, I'm not, I'm taking the bridle off. I'm gonna let you roll. <laughs> now, it, 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 honestly, <clears throat> if you're going to start a, a purposeful podcast in my, in my view, and you're looking to generate revenue or increase revenue and you want to use podcast as a part of a strategy please folks make sure that you understand as a market as a marketing consultant there are times when i would say hey a podcast might make sense as a part of the total picture i will never yes. i will i will never say just do a podcast <clears throat> it's got to be a part of a bigger picture but if you're going to do it or i should say and if you're going to do it you'll want to do it the way that ben's going to talk about it right now because you have to set it up right in order for it to be found, to be heard, to be syndicated, to be put out there by other people that are going to like them, like and love your message, and are going to want to share it with their friends. Am I am I am I on the right path there, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm okay. I I have always been that like um, you know uh, do things purposefully. You know that that's always kind of been um, my mindset, and so with all the services and everything that we set up, we really focused in on like, how can we set up uh, a process that is very uh, start with the end in mind oriented mm -hmm. um, to, you know, particularly for business and brands to use podcasting effectively. And so what, what over, you know, the last eight years and, and working on a bunch of podcasts, we've really learned that, um, you know, there's tons of strategies and tactics that work, mm -hmm. but what it boils down to is there 10, there's, there's eight, we've discovered eight, um, principles <laughs> like foundational principles that are true across the board more notes, for, more notes, more notes. <laughs> for successful principles. business podcasts. Okay. Um, and what you're talking about there is 
yes, podcasting is a vehicle. It needs to be part of the bigger picture of what you're doing and it fits in with some of the other activities and, and, you know, um, you don't build, you don't build a Lamborghini for a four wheel drive. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. um, and, and the very first principle, um, number one. principle number one, ladies and gentlemen, is, um, your objective. It's exactly what we were just talking about is being mm -hmm. purposeful and starting with the end in mind. Um, and I like to use two questions, um, when I'm, when I'm working through this process with clients is one, what am I trying to create? And two, what impact do I want to have with the podcast? So, you know, the first part is a little bit more you focused, mm -hmm. but the second part is audience industry, external focus. What impact am I trying to have? for other people, for the industry, for, you know, my, my posse, my tribe, my, you Absolutely. know, Absolutely. whatever. Makes sense. Um, and the, the beauty about this, and we'll, we'll kind of dive in here is that clarity of objective that gives you a North star. It gives you, um, you know, a, a, you know, roadmap as it were to address all of the other questions of what should I do about my podcast? What types of episodes should I do? You know, how regularly should I release episodes? How, right. you know, all those different things. You can come back to your objective and then also principle number two, which is your audience. But we'll get to that in a second. I'm getting excited. Um, what, what I find a lot is around the objectives is some folks start a podcast because people have said that they should or because they were told to by, you know, somebody in their mastermind or a coach um, or, you know, they want to grow their audience. They want to build authority. They want to network and, you know, some of, some of that kind of stuff. Sure. All of this is great. You can absolutely do all of these things well with podcasting. Yeah. But what I have found over and again is the highest uh, and most effective objective to have with the podcast is to create deep, intimate, meaningful relationships with your audience and your industry as a whole through the podcast, through educating, through motivating, through advocating, through your content. Um, and then the nice part about, or you know, the beautiful part about this is when you focus on developing that depth of relationship and being an educator, being a motivator, being an advocate for your people, for your industry, for your audience, for your prospects and clients, um, through the podcast, it turns into audience growth. It turns into authority in your space. It turns into networking and introductions and leads and clients. Um, but if you start with that as the goal, a lot of times it doesn't the, you know, the pieces don't match up. So like a great example is, is, um, a gal, Jen Hemphill, who, uh, has a podcast called her money matters. And she's mm -hmm. been at this a couple years now. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we first started having a conversation, um, we outlined the objective of her show as helping women change their mindset around money mm. in order to help them feel confident, wealthy, and empowered with their finances. Cool. So you can see how like that's extrinsically focused. Uh -huh. um, you know, you're really leading with their value, you know, like what, what's important to them. And, and, you know, it's that, what impact do I want to have? Um, and because of that focus, creating content to support that message, creating the podcast and crafting the podcast around that message, mm -hmm. uh, bringing in the right experts as guests to support that message, all of those things lead to, incredible podcast content, you know, growth over time, authority in the space, trust clients, all that kind of stuff. So right. uh, it, it really is kind of this, like start with the fundamental principle of what is true and build backwards from there. Cool. And that's principle one. Principle one, baby. Okay. Um, Number two. Principle two is your oh, audience. And, and let me, let me, let me, let me do this because yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to force something here. Let's go through four of them. Cool. They want the other four. They got to come see you. That, 
That works for me. <laughs> that works for me. Uh, yeah, we're actually we're actually updating our book and and releasing that podcast principles is is oh, even one. better, um, even better. So, we got some place to send people. Good, good absolutely. Good. Yeah, so we'll let them know. We'll let them know here in a little bit where they can go get the rest of them. But um, principle number two is your audience. So yes. a lot of folks, you know, have a general idea of their audience, or um, you know start with, uh, oh, I want my audience to be entrepreneurs or women entrepreneurs or whatever. Um, and that's a great start. What I see over and again, that the most successful and effective business podcasts have in common is the audience is incredibly specific and it addresses a specific problem. Like right. those individuals have one consistent problem. So um, another perfect example of this is a, a client, Katrina Ubel, who has a podcast called <laughs> Weight Loss for Busy Physicians. Her, her people, her audience are women physicians who have struggled with weight, you know, consistently yeah. Yeah. over time. Okay. And so through her podcast, through her coaching and her programs, she helps women lose weight. Uh, and not through like boot camps and, and, you know, trying to like hardcore motivate everybody. Um, but through helping women change their relationship with their body, their self image and food as a part of that. Um, so she's the got podcast, herself, she's got herself a hell of a niche if that's the case. Cause that's something boy, that she a does. lot of people don't realize your relationship mentally with you and with food matters way more than you going out for a walk. I mean, you should still exercise, Absolutely. obviously, but that's that's gotta be awesome, right on, okay. I mean, maybe sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> once in a while, you know. But, so. you know, uh, like, yeah, once I, a I week, only eat, I, I only, I only eat tomahawk steaks once, you know, once every other week. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> uh, perfect. But we have a good relationship, um, we really do, I love them. <laughs> that's great, yeah, that's, you know, relationship first. Kind, kind of a one-way uh, street, but I, I do love them. <laughs> yep. Yep. And one, one thing, you know, you hear, I, I hear this a lot is, it, which is a very valid concern of, I don't want to, um, you know, like, I don't want to narrow down my audience so much and exclude people. Um, cause I can help wider, a wider grouping than that. It's okay to be as specific as possible because those folks are going to super resonate with your message and folks who aren't an exact fit of that can still listen to the podcast, can still engage with your brand, can still get value from you. And will. Uh, and will. And will. But if you're mm. too broad, people tend not to see themselves in your message. They don't, res it doesn't really resonate or click yeah, with them. That makes sense. So, you know, you're trying to be everything to everybody and you, yeah, that you, doesn't work. because there's a lot of noise out there, you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, break through or you're not going to find your, your people. So, um, I'm a, I'm a big believer in be specific. Um, and you can actually expand as you go in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really hard to go the other way. If you start general, it's really hard to get much traction, um, without getting more specific. So that's, that's principle number two. Um, okay. we're cruising right along here. Let me, um, let me, let me make sure I understood that. So. Number awesome. two being, being audience, principle number two for starting a podcast, your audience needs to be super niched and it, this, this audience needs to share a common problem. They need to be yes. able to see themselves in your message in order for them to really get the know you like you trust you thing before even thinking about buying anything from you. They need to, they need to feel like you really care about them and yep. staying there will allow you to build the right kind of tribe. And then anybody else that might be ancillary to that, maybe some overlap or maybe even completely ancillary, they'll still hear you. Yep. And hell, they may even become a part of your tribe. You don't know, but not to worry about them. They'll come along as they come along or as you gain traction, you can begin to expand. And I would, I would, I would gather by the way you just denoted that, that expansion still needs to be super niche and still needs to be super like, I've got this group of people I saw some overlap here. Who are these people? All right, now I'm going to start talking to them. And that, yeah. and that group becomes the next yeah. degree of separation, if you will. Is that, does that sound about yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's that classic, like, be mayor of a small town. Yeah. Yeah. A nobody of New York City. Right. Exactly. Um, you okay. know, it, 
that 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 then allows you to you know oh people from the next town might have heard of you and you know what right. i mean as opposed to right. like you know if you're nobody in new york city if somebody's from brooklyn or manhattan or whatever you know nobody still nobody's heard of you yeah, i'm from 154th and 23rd where are you from hey, <laughs> hey who's All these right. guys who's these guys you know these guys um okay cool so <laughs> principle number three uh before we do that let's take another quick break just a real short one and we'll be right back Cool beans. We're back. We're on principle number three of the eight principles to starting a proper purposeful podcast. And I got Ben Kruger here with me, Ben. Um, we just got through talking about audience and we got through talking about, you know, the, the, the objective. Those are the first two. And we're going to do three and four and then we'll wrap it up and then we'll, we'll tell them where they can get the rest of it. So what's number three? Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so the, <clears throat> Number three is your mindset going into podcasting. Um, and this one, this one kind of. Appreciate you is... taking that. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> have a, have a delivery. Uh, it's a, uh, it's um, so up live only gets to hear half of the conversation and somebody just threw me a big, a big deal. Um, oh, nice. The they, they threw me a huge gift. So I'm just, I got to thank them. That's great. That's yeah, great. It's pretty cool. It's all this live streaming stuff while we're doing this. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, the so when it comes to mindset, um, there's kind of a spectrum here, and on the on the less desirable end of this spectrum, fundamentally, you start a podcast because you want to get something. Mm -hmm. um, you want to start a podcast specifically to grow your audience, to get mm -hmm. clients, to get business, to mm -hmm. generate revenue. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying these are bad things and you shouldn't, uh, plan for them or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you have clear objectives around what you're trying to do with the podcast. Right. That being said, mindset wise, the most effective mindset for podcasting is that you are going into this. Um, as a way to serve your audience and industry, mm -hmm. to be a leader, a educator, an advocator, uh, a motivator, mm -hmm. and essentially you can adopt this mentality. I, I really like this. I got this from a client, um, mm -hmm. Michael Kitzes, mm -hmm. on his about page. Uh, he talks about, I'm a lifelong learner. And my goal then is to come share what I learn with you guys. That's so, awesome. You know, it's like you that learn all awesome. you can, you try to be the best in, at your craft in your area of expertise, and then you're a sharer of what you have discovered, what you've learned, what you, um, you know, like how others can affect themselves and, and others in their own circles. So it's interesting because we, that's what I do essentially anytime I do live streaming or the reason that I bring people to this podcast is to share business news, business insights, things that are going on the marketplace, giving people ideas about what it is that they ought to be doing, what they should be watching. Um, obviously right now with everything that's going on, the markets are very important. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of news reading. I mean, I literally will pull up Feedly and start going through all the periodic, the ones that are trustworthy anyway, the periodicals sure. that are, that are very objective. And I go through data, you know, and I, yeah. I tell people, this is the data, this is what's going on in the market. And this is why this is happening. And then I'll even, I'll even pull up, you know, stock reports and shares, shareholders reports and things of that nature to try to decipher things sometimes for people, especially if I start getting questions, like, yeah. well, why, why did it do that? Let me, let me go look and we'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah, being, let's dig into it together. Yeah, yeah. Cause I want them to understand that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to put money at risk for anything, whether it's starting a podcast or investing in a stock, you really need to understand what it is that your risk is. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't quote unquote, hedge your bets, right? Thus the eight principles. I, this is, what's funny is people think hedging your bets has to do with money. It, it has to do with, it has to do with knowledge. <laughs> the more information you have, and that's why I do these, the more information you have, the easier it is to hedge your bets and make sure that your ROI is higher. Yeah. You know, people, I got people coming at me all day long, every day, Instagram and what have you. And they're sitting there and they're, they're Hey, have you been trading cryptocurrency? Have you been doing this? Have you been? I'm like, bruh, really? You're bringing me one of the highest, most volatile kinds of trading to my, to my, to my platform. 
and you want me to do what? Just throw money at you so you can go throw it out in the market? What do you know about cryptocurrency? Well, I'm making 10 grand a month. What do you know about cryptocurrency? Because as far as I'm concerned, that 10 grand can disappear tomorrow. I have friends yeah. that work in the- That's in the, the definition of blockchain. volatility. It is one of the highest volatile investments that you could possibly make. You don't invest there unless you actually got money to lose. Yeah. And that's, that is the absolute rule of thumb. And there's a lot of people still don't get that. So yeah, this is, this is, this principle right here, I would think is probably to me an anchor. Yeah. Okay, good. So I, I was on the right path. 100%. Yeah, yeah 100%. Because this, this, this flavors everything else. I, I would, I would have thought so. Because if you can't, if you yeah. can't, if you can't honestly bring to people, I get it. Your objective is one thing. I get it. Your audience is another thing. But if you're just having an audience there and you're not there to serve them in the manner that will benefit them and yeah. give them education, give them motivation, why in the world would you do it? You're just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. And what I what I love as a directing question for this, now that we we have our objective, mm -hmm. we have, you know, we know the impact we're trying to have. Mm -hmm. We have our audience and, yeah. and the problem that we help them with. The a great question to direct you for mindset is what's in their best interest? What's in that audience and that industry's best interest? Um, and so then you know this kind of ties into well, should I do interview shows or should I teach and do uh, solo episodes or co-hosted episodes? Well, what's in their best interest? Should I, you know, like all the other questions around uh, a podcast or around other marketing channels or, you know, really all the other things that you're doing should, should pass the what's in their best interest test. Um, <clears throat> most people live on that whole, the, the, the whole W I I F M radio station. You remember that radio station, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, for those of you that don't know what that means, it's what's in it for me, W I I F M. Duh. Uh, so if, I think if people took more time, like we're going to be starting another podcast for a rice spirits company and it's, and it's not to, to do anything more than to keep people engaged, share more of the story of what we do talk about other things, kind of like the cast cartel, kind of same idea. We're not trying to do anything more than just keep people engaged and stay at top of mind because you, you can't, you can't sell whiskey on, on a, on a podcast. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> but having the grandson of a bootlegger and sharing stories and talking with friends and doing that stuff. So we're going to kind of co-host that together. And again, as an engagement tool for people that specifically like rye whiskey. Yeah. To come and hang out. Yeah. So it should be fun. Um, but again, it goes back the to the story is what sells for like whiskey. It's not, Oh, always. the flavor is good. You know, yes, the flavor needs to be good and it needs to be good whiskey, but the story around a product like that is what sells it. Yeah. The fact that it's a, it's a hundred year old bootlegger recipe belongs to the CEO's grandmother is the one who came up with it during the years <laughs> of prohibition while they were leasing uh, property out to an actual bootlegger, learned it, made her own blah, blah, blah. You know, the whole, the whole, that whole story. Yep. But even after that is what's going on now. Where's it going? Who's a part of it? I mean, we have a, we have a barrel hunt going on, going on right now. <clears throat> um, on his deathbed, grandpa said, Hey, before we stopped, um, on one of our treks to the railhead, we were, we were told the feds were waiting for us. So we buried barrels of rye on the farm. They're somewhere here near the, near the Creek. That's we, fantastic. We find one barrel, my friend. Two things happen. One, we have a hundred year old rye. Two, we can synthesize the actual yeast that grandma used, and then we will be a hundred percent accurate. Oh, buddy. Oh, Ima buddy. Imagine what that's going to, so, so there's that kind of stuff. And again, guys, yeah. for those of you that are listening to this and, 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 you know, trying to absorb this, that's a co-hosted deal because the grandson's not really a tech savvy dude. He's, he's a, he's a good old boy from Iowa, six foot seven. He was like immensely tall um, and big heart. And he wants to share the story and he wants to be able to keep people engaged. But in order to do that, you know, he's going to need some help. So I'm jumping in to help him out. I know how to lead stories. I mean, I do this with, with Ben doesn't need me leading him. I'm just doing this for you guys. So you guys can see how this works. Um, but the idea is to be able to bring, you know, a, a second person to help keep the story moving, help keep the flow going for that one. For this one, I chose interviews because there's a, there's a lot of people like Ben out there that have great messages, that have great content, that have great things that could be for any one of you guys that want to start a business online or anybody that's listening that has a business, that has a, that's in an industry, that
that's maybe not being served enough because there isn't a podcast and message being put out around there. And Ben just happens to be one of the guys that I found that I'm, I'm more than happy to put his message out there. And he actually helps people do this. And that's why we're going through these principles is I want you guys to see he's got, he, he knows what he's talking about because everything that he's talking about, we do in business strategy. Same, same idea. If you're going to start a marketing campaign, you better know who you're talking to. You better know how you're going to talk to them. You better know how you're going to serve them. And you need to exactly know what you're going to be putting out there. If you, if you go out there with a shotgun mentality, guess what? You're spraying and praying, you're losing money and you're not going to get an ROI. Not the one that you're looking for. Not anywhere near. Totally. The same thing is happening here with what he's sharing with his principles. Um, so again, as we're going through this, the guiding question for my, for, for this whole thing is how are you going to do it? What are you going to do? Is it going to be just you? Are you going to be talking? Are you going to be sharing information, which is not a bad idea? Are you going to do it with somebody else helping out another expert perhaps, or maybe a buddy? Um, I used to love watching Tim Ferriss's random, random casts. Do you remember those? Oh yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh. By the time they were halfway through their wine there, it was just, it was a shit fest. I loved it. It was so much fun. Yeah, that um, was him and um, oh, what was his name? Um, well, it was usually him and his his one of his best his friends. Buddy, and like, a couple times there were two more, one or two more guys with him. Kevin or something. Yeah, yeah I can't remember his name, but boy, the shit show those boys would put on by the time they were halfway through a bottle. Yeah. Oh, it was so <laughs> cool. Lit. I, yeah, oh, it was <laughs> awesome. And then then the philosophical shit would start hitting. Then it's just like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's great. So that's so great. so keep that in mind when you're doing this. Guys. Again, you're thinking about what it, how how do you want to do this? Where are you serving, and and how do you want to serve them? Because um, it it's going to matter as far as whether or not they're going to take that and reshare it to other people that may want to hear it. Is that is that about right? Hundred percent. I mean, you know, podcasting is essentially a channel and a medium for you to communicate and and connect with folks. So. The same principles that apply to marketing, storytelling, connection, okay. relationship building All in day. marketing is going to be exact same thing for podcasting, just different format, different, you know, slightly love different application. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yep. Just, yep. Yep. I was happy I called you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, I love these conversations because, um, mm. You know, especially having a conversation with somebody who is very marketing mindset oriented. Like that's, that's, I liked listening to podcasts before I got started. I, you know, the podcast editing thing was kind of fun and interesting, Yeah. but I got really excited on that, that time that I first worked with a client to help them craft and launch the podcast because like that, that's my jam is like figuring out how the message will work, how tied in with the rest of their brand, you know, all the other marketing pieces. Yeah. Um, and it's honestly the difference between, you know, just building a small little box with some nails and building a house. Totally. It's, it's yeah. I mean, I'm just doing a bathroom remodel. Eh. I'm building a two story. That's the fucking mansion. Ooh. <laughs> So yeah, I, I totally get it because at the end of the day, when you've got that done and you're handing the keys over to somebody and you know, that's your handiwork. Yeah. Big difference. Cool. So what are we, are we good with number three? Can we move to number four? We are good with number three. And actually, um, since we're doing four, I'm going to skip a few. Uh -oh, uh -oh, and, uh oh, he's going to throw the curve in here, guys. He's yeah. Moving. We're going to go to number nine. Um, or sorry. Oh, nine. There aren't even nine that I came up with. It's number seven. Um, we're going because, to principle seven. He's going to, he's going to skip I a few. Want I want to connect this back to how it can work um, for brands that are looking to, you know, maybe not awesome. as their primary driver, but they're looking to generate clients and customers out do of it. a podcast. Do it. What do you got? What is it? So uh, number seven is your funnel. And first off, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of the word funnel because it really, you know, harkens these like. That's a marketing term. Yeah. These like <laughs> we use hardcore the email marketing <laughs> things, but what it really is, is I, I kind of think of it as a value ladder. So yeah, 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 absolutely. On the low end of this totem pole is folks who have a podcast um, and their game plan is going to be to use the podcast to talk about themselves, to talk about the offer that they have, um, you know, the service or the SaaS app or the whatever. Um, and their primary, you know, action that they have for people is subscribe to the podcast and follow us on social media. 
um, which I don't care if you follow me on social media. In fact, doesn't kind of dumb. Doesn't help the listener get <laughs> nope. anywhere. Doesn't help them nope. do anything. Doesn't nope. you know? It's very me most focused. It's very them focused. Yeah, it's it. most of my socials personal anyway. You're not going to get that much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's all weird things. Yeah, you don't, don't want to understand. You what don't want to see half here, the shit you know? that I'm posting half the time. It's uh, only about coffee anyway. It's, <laughs> three glasses of wine in and don't make any freaking sense. Uh, only whiskey, um, no wine. <laughs> and on the on the better end of that spectrum, mm-hmm. um, what you are really looking to do is through the the content of your podcast, you mm-hmm. are educating, you are telling stories and engaging and interacting. You are, you know, sharing insights, principles, mindsets, uh, you know, tactics and really like drawing people into this world. Um, And then what's important is to have a specific one or two simple next step options for folks that when they're ready to get a bigger result, you've already figured out for most people, this Mm -hmm. is going to be the core next step for them. Mm -hmm. And it's something small and simple that you can help them with. And a lot of times this is through an opt-in of some kind, Mm -hmm. a, you know, a checklist, an ebook, a video, webinars, whatever. It really doesn't matter what the vehicle is. Um, The idea really is they are ready to take a little bit of a next step to get a bigger result, but you want to be in the sweet spot between follow me on social media and subscribe to the podcast, which does nothing for them. And let's get on a sales call, which also does nothing for them. Yeah, absolutely. But is it's, it's a huge ask. It's a huge, you know, it is a huge gap ask. and, and, mm-hmm. you know, cause they know like a discovery call means you're going to try to sell me something. Um, so what you need to do is something in the middle there that, is that one kernel of a next step option that you present as a, hey, whenever you're ready, here's the next step you can take. So um, for us, that piece, the the thing that I share as our, you know, funnel piece is this book that we've been writing, The Eight Podcast Principles, and it kind of goes through all the eight podcast principles, whether you have a show or you want to put together a show for your business and brand um, that help you understand what goes into a highly successful business podcast. Um, and so that's like the perfect way to, for somebody to get more information, to mm-hmm. educate themselves and take a next step without interacting with you directly, because that's a huge commitment. Yeah. Um, and they can do it on their own time. And a lot of times they will take that action to take the next step and that introduces them to the fact that you can help them through your services that introduces them to the options you have um on on next steps around how you work with folks because you know if they send in their email then you can like follow up with them and see what their situation is or they you know go to the website to get the the free thing right and oh by the way you've got a services tab um so it's not you know this isn't a don't talk about what you do and and hide the fact that there's something there the the mindset shift is there's a key few next steps we've created because we know people have this these few specific challenges and so we've created uh, an asset a resource you know something that's going to help you take that next step and you know small digestible easy to implement uh, easy to understand and one of the one of the things that we've found works really, really great for this is something that can, um, especially in like the coaching and marketing and, and, you know, consulting space, if you can teach core concepts Mm -hmm. through a next step thing, like, you know, an ebook or a video Mm -hmm. series or a webinar Mm -hmm. or whatever, that's great because people get, people feel like they've made a lot of progress yeah. When they feel like they understand something new, it like really syncs up something new in their brain. Um, and they can kind of envision for themselves then, A, whether or not what you do even applies to them. And B, they can envision the possibilities there, which is exactly 
what motivation is, is like, you know, if they can see the possibilities mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. um, and you're the person that helped lead them to that understanding and, and having a better, a better insider knowledge of what that looks like, like we were talking about before, right. Right. Um, then you are the obvious choice for them. Uh, you know, if they're, if they're ready to actually get a bigger result and, and work with somebody or, you, you know, whatever logical choice. Yeah. You yeah. Just you just become a logical choice. choice. So, like the, all these pieces kind of meld and play together and, you know, the borders of one principle definitely, you know, meshes and, and molds into the other ones. Um, but all together, that's what we've found, you know, really makes all the difference between the shows that skyrocket and do really well. And the shows that, uh, as, as it's, called in the industry pod fade they you know have episodes for a while maybe they're out there a couple months and it's not really getting any interaction it's not really getting any results and so then they just stop recording new episodes right right so i have i have two more questions <clears throat> i have two more questions for you and then we'll wrap this up and hopefully i didn't just brain fart because i'm only remembering one now we'll go one at a time yeah right <laughs> that's about the only way we're going to do this if someone's considering starting a podcast, what would be the one piece of advice you could give them outside of what we've discussed that would tell them to either pull the trigger or not? Yeah, great question, great question. Um, so I, this is, this is where my brain always goes, is like how do I help people understand the go no go factor of like does this make sense for me um so i i tend not to like to direct people to like my my own resources as as a next step because and it just feels like slimy to me but <laughs> this is actually how we open the podcast principles book is like a little assessment of um whether podcasting is the right vehicle for you right now well, that, that just, that, that actually just makes sense though. I mean, right. if somebody, if somebody's, if that's what you do, Ben, that's what you do. And my, yeah. my listeners know this. And, and one of the cool things about that is you do know what you do. Um, and if the advice comes from taking a little assessment, then they need to take a little well, assessment. That's what I figured. You know, that's what we created it for. So, um, yeah, the, the, that is in the very opening of our book and in built into, we created a, a podcast principles scorecard. Nice. That is the same thing that helps people, you know, understand the principles and rank themselves and rate themselves against the principles to see if they're in the right position to start a podcast. Um, so both of those are at thepodcastprinciples.com. Got it. The, and I'm going to put this in the, in the um, descriptions too. Perfect. The podcast Perfect. principles. Podcast is singular? Correct. Okay. Podcast principles. P-L-E-S. Correct. Correct. Okay, cool. All right, so that's one. Guys, if you, and again, we're going to say that again, thepodcastprinciples.com. There's a book there you can get. There's an assessment in there, a scorecard. Don't go launching off like I've had clients do before. Oh, I'm going to go to sell this widget. Yeah, probably not a good idea to do right now. Oh, no, I'm going to do it. And then they end up spending thousands and thousands of dollars doing nothing. And, and even though this may only cost you a couple hundred, I mean, come on. Find a real reason to do it. Use the resource. It's there. It's free. It's, you, I mean... And if anything, you might end up working with Ben anyway, um, which wouldn't be a bad thing at all, uh, especially after this conversation. I, my, my own scorecard is going to need some revamping. Um, you've had a good degree of success up to this point. Would that be fair? Yeah, sure. I'll, okay. I'll run with that. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the MO, well, you must have, otherwise you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. Yeah, um, wouldn't be here. Yeah. With that said, What's one of the biggest challenges that if you had a magic wand you could get rid of, what's one of the biggest challenges you'd be able, you'd like solve, like? Mm. Um, the biggest challenges. Boy, this is, this is a, the, the immediate thing that comes to mind personally is mm. um, if I could wave a magic wand and mm -hmm. have, uh, I'm not sure exactly what form it would take, but if, the end result that I want is um, clarity. So if I could wave a magic wand and have some way of 
help sifting through ideas in my head, variations of ways I could go about it, um, like what that what the end result could theoretically look like, and like kind of going from from this giant jumbled mess of ideas in my head to like, ooh, here's the three, you know, here's like a, a simple like three next step approach yeah. to what this might look like. Nice. Um, I think like like Insta Clarity would be would be awesome. And I guess that's that's maybe the uh, sales pitch for a lot of business coaches uh, and like masterminds. But um, yeah, but, think, but what put you, it in those words, that might be you, that might really have, get me in. You have well, it, and I'm I'm not I'm not putting that out for a coach to come and start pitching it because that's what you just said is not necessarily a coach's yes they help with that kind of stuff but what you're talking about is being able to reorganize ideas that are in your mind so that there's some structure to it you're creative like me i have the same issue so there and there's and there's ways to do that i'll share that with you off uh, offline and there's there's a couple of tools that i they use not to mention i still i still do this oh yeah because it does help um I've been doing that for the last uh, six, seven days. We've been doing a 21 day abundance challenge, which is a blast. It's, it's really cool. We sit down nice. and go through all kinds of stuff. Um, it's actually helped me calm my brain down some. <clears throat> so I get it. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting challenge we creatives have. Yeah. And it's, you know, just like all, well, most other challenges, it's largely self-created. Um, but it it totally exists and absolutely you know shiny object syndrome kicks up um, <laughs> daily or yeah or the opposite of that and and I kind of I kind of roller coaster between the two is like I almost get this like sense of apathy after a while of oh, like yeah. so many ideas that I just feel overwhelmed and not Same. even sure what to do so, Same, bro. Same. just like oh Same. We'll just close the laptop for a minute and go for a walk or something. That's I, I can I can tell you right now that that happens to me daily. Yep. Um, it, that is a great solution because it gives us a chance. Last night I went out what for what I thought was going to be a short walk, and I ended up walking like four miles or three or four miles. Nice. And then finally, then finally came back home and realized I walked three or four miles and went, oh damn. <laughs> but but it gives time us that travel. time. Yeah, it gives us that time to to calm down. Um, and it's all good. So cool. Well. We could go on probably for another hour, dude. I know we could. That's the danger. We'll we'll have to do this again if you don't mind, and and get into other stuff and talk about more things, it's, especially when it comes to business. If you don't mind, I'd love to have you back. Um, that sounds great. At at this point, I want to thank you very much for taking the time and investing time here at Java Chat. Um, I actually have coffee left, which is unusual, <laughs> but it but it usually means it was a very good podcast because it means I was taking notes and there was stuff for me to learn. Um, a lot of times I end up empty um, and it's because I've been talking quite a bit. Um, no, n not, not saying that any of my other guests are not as, as interactive. I've had plenty of fun, plenty, but this one I took notes. So <clears throat> um, any last- I'll take that as the compliment I think that it might be. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> you're, you're awesome, dude. Um, <laughs> it, it, what one last piece of advice and then we'll sign off what would be your best your best piece of advice to a budding entrepreneur that's thinking about just getting going what would be your just hey guys if you're gonna do this boom yeah good question good question um i seem to be full of them today yeah you're, you're killing it <laughs> um the I think one of the things for me that made a huge difference right out of the gate was um having access to a mentor. Um, nice. So if there's anybody in your, in your life, social circles, family, you know, your third cousin once removed, whatever, that has any sort of experience in business and entrepreneurship in owning and renting real estate property and anything, you know, in that direction of entrepreneurial uh, activity, mm -hmm. Uh, I would heavily encourage people to essentially like connect with them and yeah. ask them like, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but I would love, um, I would love your, your guidance if you're open to sharing. And this comes with a huge caveat of 
be willing to do whatever it is they coach you on doing, unless it's, you know, to direct harm of yourself. Um, right. Cause there's, there's only one way to lose a mentor really quickly. And that's to not do what they, what they are actually coaching or advising right. you to do. Right. Um, and a lot of times people won't do it because it's scary. Um, it is. and it is. that's okay. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Cool. Uh, and just for you guys that are watching there, he's one of his biggest pieces of advice is get a mentor, be ready to do what the mentor tells you and learn. Um, cause it will be good. In most mentors, most mentors, I, I know a couple that are, mm, most sure. mentors are really good about what they're, what they're trying to share with. All right, guys. For sure. So for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Java chat for today. I want to thank Ben Kruger again for joining us. Ben, give that website one more time so they can get that book. Yeah, uh, thepodcastprinciples.com and our service is cashflowpodcasting.com. You have a podcast too, that would mean, and what is your podcast called? We actually don't actively podcast. Shh, Shh. don't tell anybody. I didn't ask that question. We're editing this portion out of the podcast. We're not saying <laughs> No, anything. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, it's kind of a funny dichotomy. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, guys, so thepodcastprinciples.com. And the other one again was Cashflow. Cashflowpodcasting.com is our brand. Okay, cashflowpodcasting.com. Guys, get after it. Take a look at it. Consume the consume the content. It's worthwhile. I mean, I'm just gonna go grab the book just because I want to see what the other four are. Because, um, like I said, I know my my scorecard probably needs an upgrade. Thank you. Thanks for having coffee with me. Thanks for hanging out. For those of you that are watching on YouTube as well, don't forget to subscribe and share and if you're listening on anchor or on any of the podcasting platforms thanks for listening you know i love all you guys i really appreciate every one of you and i want you to keep staying up staying healthy staying safe we love you all talk to you soon ciao for now